Can you imagine a 60-foot wave appearing out of nowhere, crashing into the cruise liner you're on, and crushing the ship's bow like it was made of paper? Well, in 1978, people didn't have to imagine it. SS Michelangelo was struck by a giant rogue wave that killed three people on board and injured over 50 passengers. The Italian line wanted to build a state-of-the-art cruise liner that would be unlike any before it. In 1958, they began working on SS Michelangelo, a 46,000-ton cruise liner that was launched on September 16, 1962. It was 900 feet long and had a beam of 100 feet. The engineers installed 87,000 horsepower using geared turbines. With all that power, the ship could reach a speed of 17 knots or 50 kilometers per hour, and all that with a capacity to accommodate 1,775 passengers. That's on top of the 720 crew members needed to operate the ship. This luxury cruise ship was the jewel of the Italian line, with its sleek design, its Turin Polytechnic design funnels, and that large deflector fin it had on top. Everything about it screamed status and luxury. However, just one year after its maiden voyage, the SS Michelangelo departed from the port of Genoa, Italy on April 7, 1966, with a lot of European celebrities on board. On April 12th, just five days after the departure, the Michelangelo was struck by a giant rogue wave. The scary thing about the rogue wave is that the ship was built to withstand waves that were up to 66 feet high. Sure, it was a rocky ride, but the Michelangelo was fine. The rogue wave appeared as the liner was going down from one wave with its nose pointing downwards. The ship would have been able to cut this wave with its knife edge bow, but the front of the ship was pointing down. The wave came crashing onto the front deck and the forward superstructure at a critical moment. Despite the damage, the Michelangelo resurfaced, but with the front of the ship missing. The passengers were staying in their cabins as per the captain's instructions. After the storm had passed, everyone saw the damage. The front of the ship caved in and two passengers were killed along with one crew member. Fifty other people were injured. As soon as the luxury liner Michelangelo docked at the port in New York, camera crews were waiting to report the damage. You can clearly see that many of the berths and equipment have been damaged. It's still a miracle this cruise liner made it to the port. Later, the ship was repaired, replacing the shattered aluminum structures with steel plates. This became common after the incident to ensure the safety of the passengers on cruise liners. The SS Michelangelo was fully operational after this incident, and it remained so popular that Alfred Hitchcock, the world-renowned director, took a cruise from New York to France to attend the 1972 Cannes Film Festival. Alas, on November 30, 2000, Scott Smith passed away. He went sailing on C Major, his own boat, with two other friends. They were just off the coast of San Francisco and very close to the Golden Gate Bridge. Out of nowhere, a giant wave came crashing by. The 25-foot rogue wave hit Smith's sailboat, and he went overboard. He was reported missing, and the Coast Guard conducted a thorough and privately funded search and rescue mission, but they couldn't find the body. Scott Smith's body hasn't been found to this day, and he's presumed dead. Mike Reno, the lead singer of Loverboy, even wrote the hit song Stranded, honoring the loss of his best friend and partner. And all that because of a dangerous rogue wave that came out of nowhere. On December 7, 1978, the Munchen left the port of Bremerhaven in Germany. It was supposed to arrive in Savannah, Georgia. Once the crew of 28 loaded the 83 lighters of steel products on board the ship, the ship went on its 60-second voyage. This one was across the North Atlantic, so the weather was not kind to the crew. The fierce storm overtook the ship, and the ship's communications were damaged. The last anyone has ever heard of the MS Munchen was when they overheard a conversation of the ship's radio officer giving coordinates of the vessel's location on December 11th at midnight. The last known location of the ship was 42 degrees north, 24 degrees west. At around 3.10 in the morning, a Greek freighter by the name of Marion received SOS calls. They were relayed to Maria Yermolova, a Soviet freighter, and later relayed to the Titan, a German tugboat. This last relay revealed the location of the Munchen using Morse code, and it revealed that the ship was located at 46 degrees 15 north, 27 degrees 30 west. It's likely that the vessel was 100 miles away from this location. The last known call was recorded at 7.34 in the morning, and by 17.30 on December 12, 1978, an international search and rescue mission began. However, they couldn't find a single trace from the MS Munchen. 
It's as if the ship disappeared in the middle of nowhere. Currently, it's believed that a giant rogue wave appeared out of nowhere, capsized the ship, and took it under. Well, they're simply unpredictable waves that are as rare as Halley's Comet. Unlike the comet, they are unpredictable and usually have devastating consequences. Even large ships are prone to damage from these rogue waves. The most famous example of a rogue wave is in the Great Wave off Kanagawa, a woodblock print by Japanese Yukio-e artist Hokusai, created in late 1831. Many people think this is a tsunami, but some oceanographers believe this was a rogue wave. Rogue waves are not the biggest in the world. They're the biggest for the given region. A rogue wave is twice the significant wave height. That's the mean of the largest third of the record wave height. They aren't caused by one factor, instead wind, strong currents, and the merging of several smaller waves can create a rogue wave. For example, off the coast of Vancouver Island, there's a buoy to capture rogue waves. For example, in November of 2002, off the coast of Euclid in British Columbia, one such buoy measured a wave of 58 feet. At first, the buoy rides the waves in regular motions, and then the buoy takes a giant trough. After that, the buoy goes on top of a giant peak, followed by a descent into an even bigger trough. Scientists measured the wave and found out that this was the most extreme wave in recent history. It's the highest wave on known record, since the peak was as high as a four-story building. Waves like this are so rare, they happen only once every hundred years. Thanks to Hollywood, everyone knows about the sinking of the Titanic. It was called unsinkable until it took the first voyage. It hit an iceberg with the starboard, and although the captain managed to avoid a direct collision, the Titanic began sinking. The first five compartments of the ship flooded, and the bow went under. This caused the stern of the ship to rise in the air and collapse under its weight. The bow reached the sea floor first, and the stern came crashing down afterwards. For many years, no one knew where the Titanic was, but after 110 years using specialized crewed vessels built to support the water pressure, dove 13,000 feet, and used 4K cameras to document the remains of this luxury liner that had become known worldwide. The rust is slowly eating away at the metal, and it'll eventually be consumed by the bacteria, becoming an artificial reef at the bottom of the North Atlantic. 1,500 people lost their lives in this tragic accident, all because there weren't enough lifeboats. Since then, special safety measures have been implemented to ensure something like this never happens. Every security officer needs to perform regular vessel inspections to make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. The VSO has to propose any modifications necessary to the security officer. All of the incidents have to be recorded by the security officer and reported immediately. And aside from monitoring the security equipment, ships also need screening programs for recruits joining the crew. All this, along with sturdily built ships, ensure giant waves don't take down innocent lives at sea anymore. Bye for now.